Hello everyone! In this video, I am unboxing and reviewing the Simbonds Picasso Tab. The Picasso Tab is different from previous drawing tablets I reviewed. It is a multi-purpose tablet. It works like a standard tablet. You can do things like browse the internet and download apps. Uh, but you can also use it for drawing. Uh, so let's get started. Here we have the box. Let's open it up and see what's inside. First we have the warranty card and instruction manual. I recommend reading this since it helps you set up the tablet. Next we have this protective case. I think it's very nice that the tablet comes with this case, especially if you plan to take it places. It also has a pen holder on the side of it. Next we have this box. Inside there is a quadruple A battery for the pen. The pen already comes with a battery installed, so this is a spare one. I think it's nice that they give a spare battery. Uh, next we have the power cable and adapters. Next we have the pen. The pen feels very nice to hold. It is slim and feels like it's made out of a metal material. It's not plastic. It also has a pen clip on the side. The pen has 1024 levels of pressure sensitivity. Now for the tablet. It is 10.1 inches. It has a capacitive IPS touchscreen and its resolution is 1280 by 800. For storage, it has 32 gigabytes. It can be upgraded with another 32 gigabyte microSD card for file storage. It has 2 gigabytes of RAM and runs on Google Nougat 7. The tablet comes pre-installed with a screen protector. You can remove it if you want to, but I would recommend keeping it on. Uh, I'll talk about why I recommend that in a bit. Also, the tablet offers palm rejection when the pen is brought close to the tablet. Now that we are done unboxing the Picasso tab, I'm going to talk about what I think of the tablet. While I'm talking, you'll be watching me draw on the Picasso tab. So let's start by talking about the setup of the tablet. Before using the tablet for the first time, I had to let it charge for about 5 hours. This felt like it took a long time since I was really excited to use the tablet. <laughs> Uh, the setup was simple and easy. It's like setting up any other Android phone or tablet. When it comes to doing things like going on the internet or watching videos, the tablet seems to perform just fine. It's pretty fast and I didn't notice any hiccups. The tablet comes installed with the Autodesk Sketchbook app and I'm going to be honest, this app wasn't really for me. It works but I didn't love it, so I downloaded a different free app called Medibang Paint. I liked this one much more. Now let's talk about what many of you are probably wondering, how well does it work for drawing? Now even though the tablet isn't just for drawing, I'm going to compare it to other drawing tablets like ones I reviewed in the past, since I'll mostly be using this tablet for drawing. It took me a little while to get used to drawing with this tablet. It is pretty different than drawing on something like my Cintiq, which is what I usually use. But after using it for a while, it definitely feels nice to draw on and I really enjoy using it. The pen has 1024 levels of pressure sensitivity, which is on the lower side. Uh, many drawing tablets have 8192 levels. Um, it still responds well to changes in pressure sensitivity, but it's definitely not the most responsive. Like I mentioned earlier, I recommend keeping the screen protector on because if you're not careful, the pen seems to leave scratches. When I finished the picture I was working on, I noticed the screen protector had quite a few scratches in it. Now on touchscreen tablets, you can often do things like zoom in or rotate the canvas by using hand gestures. And this can kind of cause a problem. Uh, one of the things I did find a little frustrating was the palm rejection. Now I really like that it has palm rejection, it's just I wish it worked a little better. The pen has to be super close to the tablet for the palm rejection to work. And a lot of times when I would lift my hand and then place it back down, I would accidentally make the screen move, rotate, or zoom in even if I didn't move my hand very high off the tablet. Thankfully, the drawing apps have settings that can help this. In Autodesk Sketchbook, you can turn off rotating the screen with your fingers. And you can also turn off all hand gestures. So this basically gets rid of the palm rejection issue. But when you turn off the hand gestures, it makes it so you can't zoom in and rotate. There doesn't seem to be any on-screen buttons for that, so anytime you want to zoom in or rotate the screen, uh, you'll have to go back into settings and turn the hand gestures back on. In Medibang, you can't turn off all hand gestures, but you can make it so you can't rotate the screen with your fingers. 
Uh, this helps a lot because a lot of times I was accidentally rotating the screen. Medibang has on-screen buttons for these functions, uh, so you can still do them even if you turn off the hand gestures. I would also recommend turning on palm rejection in Medibang. Uh, this will make it so you can't draw on the canvas with your hand. Uh, this is very helpful. So the palm rejection was a little annoying, but after adjusting the settings, it worked much better. Also, after using the tablet for a while, I was getting better about placing the pen and then my palm, so it's kind of just something I had to get used to. Even though using this tablet was a bit of a learning process, I still really enjoyed my time with it, and I will definitely be using this tablet for drawing in my everyday life. A lot of times I want to draw digitally, but with working on YouTube and my webcomic, I already spend a lot of time on the computer, and I just want to go sit on my couch. <laughs> Uh, well, now I can sit on my couch and draw digitally, which is really cool. Uh, I really enjoy sitting on my couch and getting to draw on this tablet. <laughs> on Amazon, the Picasso tab is $199.95. According to Simbons, the Picasso tab is the world's first multi-purpose drawing tablet within the $200 range. I think this is a good price for the tablet, and it is definitely much more affordable than most drawing tablets with a screen. So is the Picasso tab going to replace my Cintiq? Uh, no, it will not replace my Cintiq, but the Picasso tab isn't really made for people like me uh, that do digital art a lot or that know they really, really like digital art. It's for beginners and students that want to get into digital art, and I think it works really well for that. I think this is a great tablet to get if you want to draw digitally but don't have a computer. I know many of my viewers don't have a computer or they have an older one that doesn't work very well for running drawing software. Uh, this makes getting into digital art very expensive because then you need to get a computer and a tablet. Uh, but with this, it's kind of all in one for a lower price of $200. I also think it's a good tablet if you want a tablet with a screen. Overall, I enjoy using the Picasso tab, and I really look forward to using it for sketching on my couch. <laughs> so that is all I have to say about the Picasso tab. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!